Period. And you'll see them both today on ESPN. Today, from the UIC Pavilion in Chicago, Illinois, it's the Virginia Slims of Chicago Finals. Brought to you by La Salle 10 Nail Treatments, America's nail care expert. And by Michelob. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. It's Martina Navratilova, the number one seed in the championship today, in the final match against Chris Everett, and boy, have they played many times before. Good day to you, everyone. I'm Cliff Drysdale. You know, they... She switches on and her concentration is incredible. So I've never seen her play a bad match. And along the latter years, she has developed the physical side as well. So she is out there with everything now. See now in the next 10 years, but forever. It certainly will be, because Martina is truly a phenomenon as far as a female body is concerned. She is fantastic, and she would have been great in any sport. And you know, what makes this in uh, lineup so interesting is the fact that you have the epitome of a serve volleyer, an aggressive player, and you have the accuracy of the Chris Everett from the baseline. So they've always been wonderful matches to watch. You know, when you check the number of times they've played against each other, so many times on different surfaces, Virginia, on this surface, though, Martina has had the edge. Well, I think so. And they are two matches all this year, but I do think that this surface does favor Martina that little bit. All right, the number two and three player in the world, the number one and two seed in this championship. It is Martina Navratilova of the USA, Chris Everett of the USA. They will play in the finals in just a moment. Polo Club in Boca Raton, that's where she and her husband Andy Mill live. Her second marriage. And has it done anything for her? Now, let's see, we're about just about a year into the new marriage. Uh, Virginia and has it settled her down in any way I mean uh, she has as we said going into this tournament into this final match been so successful for so long but she is still very competitive obviously well I think that it absolutely has done something in the way that it's re-enthused her to play because she said it's so much fun going around with Andy to uh, these tournaments but particularly to all the international tournaments she said she's had just so much pleasure of sort of taking him along to the places around the world, the Parises and the Londons and uh, Australia that he hadn't been to. And so she's, uh, that has given her incentive. What uh, a bad life, isn't no, it? No, and she has committed herself to playing through next year. You know, when they talk, Virginia, about Chris retiring, it always amuses me because she loves the sport so much, rather like a Chris, rather like a Jimmy Connors, that as long as she's successful, in my opinion, she is going to continue to play. Martina Navratilova, left-hander, of course, and as you made some reference to it is an interesting contrast of styles between the two of them because martina well she likes to attack the ball at every opportunity as a matter of fact we had some discussion just about a week ago about the fact that maybe now she's not attacking as much as she used to and it hurts her somewhat i think she has lost maybe a foot on her way to one step on her way to the net um i think that she's not quite as sharp at the net you know there was a stage when she was so totally in control of things that you felt that the ball had a magnet, magnet, magnet to her racket. Now you don't quite feel that. They're in the final stages of their warm-up. Chris Everett and Martina Navratilova. That final match when we come back. Three sets. Final match of the Virginia Slims Championship, which starts tomorrow night in Madison Square Garden, will be the best of five. And both of these players, of course, will be competing, but they are not playing on Monday night. Tomorrow night, Steffi Graf is the star. Clever volley from Martina. She just faded it out. So difficult for Chris to cover. First game of the match, 40 love. Martina Navratilova beat Zina Garrison here. Well, she's beaten her a lot more than 
if he's ever lost it. In fact, he's only lost her once, but what a big one at the US Open this year. Now it's a lover, first game of the match. This is the Virginia Slims of Chicago. Final match, the winner will take home $50,000. We'll be back with more in a moment. The villain in Chicago is just about, uh, about 15 minutes drive from downtown. On campus, of course, some results you may be interested in. Gabriela Sabatini lost to Helena Sukova. She looked tired, but Sukova served especially well. We're watching Martina Navratilov and Chris Everett, of course, in this final round match. And Grossman upset Natalie Svereva, whom I hope you had a chance to see in the final just a week ago against Martina Navratilov in the Virginia Sims of New England. Just excellent le length from Chris. But just thinking about Svereva, she played such an excellent tournament last week in New England, defeated Chris in the semi-final and then lost in a long match to Martina, but 17 years old, you can hardly expect her to be able to sustain that week after week. Well, one of the things that has happened here is that they have resurfaced this court so that last week, this week, in the Virginia Slims Championship, the surface is identical. It's playing a little bit faster, Chris said. But they look as if they've been, they're playing almost in their sleep. They look so familiar with it. And this is one of the benefits of playing indoors. You don't have any other factors to contend with. The way that Chris has just broken that ball, hitting it so early, so confidently, you can really build up your confidence on indoor court. And uh, that's one of the things that has shown in Martina's history is that she's, the more she has played, the more she has won. She just gets into such a groove. Oh, well, that's a great drop shot. No points against serve yet. Chris is game won by Martina. Without the loss of a point, and then Chris did the same thing. It's 15 love, one game all. And those flashes really disturb the players on indoor courts, but most of the cameras don't operate without the flash operating. a great get from Martina just to keep herself in the point even though she didn't win it and Cliff that lob of Chris is so perfectly placed I always feel that if she lobs against Martina she has a chance of uh, beating her but for a long time I think Martina put her under so much pressure that she forgot to lob against her now she started again That one was not intentional. That was all she could do. Defensive lob, just long, 30-15, one game on. Yeah. Well, the seeded players all got a buy in this championship, so Griseva didn't have to play her first round match, and then she got a walkover over Stephanie Rahe, who was involved in an accident, car accident earlier this week. Game to Navratilova. Two games to one now in the first set of this bit. As I said, he's going to get $50,000. The runner-up will make, well, $22,000 in change, but the winner is also going to get a beautiful diamond tennis bracelet, courtesy of the Jewelers of America. And I have a very close-up view of this, and so do you now, because Virginia Wade has got one of those beautiful things. You know that's something that the players enjoy having. One, two, first set, no serve breaks yet. When I 
said that Stephanie Rahe had an accident. It was not a major accident, and the accident was actually not the reason that she had to withdraw. She turned her ankle. And he doubles. But the result of it, Virginia, is that Chris Everett is here. She's had to play one match, that against Rosalind Fairbank, who beat Laurie McNeil in the second round. Well, make it one match to get to the semi-final, and then she beat Manuela Maliva, just two matches to play in this championship match. And they've kept the draw to 28, because it is the week before the championships. trouble here in this game for Chris but uh, both players said that they had appreciated having the bye that had made the week feel very different say from last week where they had a lot of tough matches both players Martina didn't play doubles this week either I used not to be in favor of that I felt that once you got in the tournament 32 draw everybody regardless of seated players or not you'd have to play from the first round I've changed my mind I think well, to give the seated players advice is a good idea I think at this stage it is once in a while because uh they just end up playing so much. Great point. That's great stuff from Chris. She has got to remember to be aggressive against Martina or else Martina gets all over her. And this is a shot that uh, just brimming with confidence that she was going to come in, but it hit the line anyway. Still break point, remember. Forehand hit the tape, got the line, and then an outstanding passing shot. And every shot just hit so firmly and early, and the, the way she stayed down with that ball, because she was under a lot of pressure, keeping your balance so important on the passing shots. Great point. backhand of Martina brought the error. You know, because they, because they played each other so many times, they would go through different patterns of exploiting each other's games. Now you feel that they're so familiar, they both are so perfect in all areas, that they just get out there and do the, play the ball, not play the opponent. Interesting comment. Break point. Fourth of the game. Can hardly blame Martina for what she did, an outstanding play, but Chris just came up with another outstanding passing shot to level this game. Martina wants to call. Well, she looks as if she... Well, she's not happy, but she left that ball as if she thought it was going a yard out. I mean, I don't not have a very good view here, but I must say I thought it, may, it probably hit the line. But watch how Martina just, just doesn't even make an attempt at this. She makes a decision right there, leaves it. She could easily have played it, and there the ball is going to land in the court, it seems. Game point now. Two games all. All kinds of trouble was Chris Everett in, in that game, but she held on. Sometimes when you let a ball go like that, you feel like an idiot, maybe, and you argue just because you said, just a sec, i got to make this thing look a little better, otherwise they're going to say you let the ball go. Well, pros aren't supposed to do that, but it happens. Yeah, it's an error of judgment. But it shook her a little bit because the next ball was a strange missing. Oh. Half volley drop shot, unintentional of course, but she'll take it. 
Well, when somebody hits that sort of shot against you, you just have to say good shot because Chris has hit a magnificent return right at her feet. Martina has served almost perfectly so far. One of the few volleys that she had a chance to hit. Not getting enough practice in those volleys. That's terrific stuff from Chris Everett. It really is. Keeping herself in that point and finally drawing the error. Martina upset about something, I'm not sure what it was. Well, I think that the crowd uh, tried to make the call on the base, on the baseline. Please be quiet during the point, thank you. It, it was a very, very close baseline call, and of course, the audience always wants to make the call. Through off. 15.30, and an ace. 17th year of the Virginia Slims of Chicago, no. Martina Navratilova has won it, listen to this, eight times. Chris hasn't played here in eight years, interestingly. The last time she played here, she lost to Martina in the final. Martina is the holder, she won the last two years. That's the first fault Martina served since the opening point of this match. <laughs> Wonderful tennis. Three games to two now for Martina. Final match, $50,000 at stake. Virginia Slims of Chicago as you look at downtown Chicago. Look at that skyline. And in the foreground, of course, the shores of Lake Michigan. We'll be back. A five telecast brought to you under rights granted by the Women's International Tennis. An outstanding thing just by putting together this series of matches that you and I, Virginia, have enjoyed uh, covering five matches in all. We started out with, uh, well, I guess not that good a match out in California, but remember the one, the final match, Sabatini. We saw uh, Gabriella Sabatini uh, beating um, Steffi, Steffi Graf. Graf in one of our finals, and of course last week in New England, another really outstanding match. One by Martina Never to Love, she's going for two in a row. Over Natalia Svereva. Good idea from Martina, that little dink shot instead of the approach, uh, the passing shot, but she didn't quite make it. Well, I don't know whether Chris missed that yes, shot no. because she had decided to go across court and she saw Martina covering that, so she had to change her mind. But it was a costly point, I think. She really has to stay level with Martina all the way. She doesn't want to let Martina get ahead in front. She was love 40 in her last service game. Oh, just wide. Virginia Wade, by the way, your co-host today in the booth along with me, Cliff Drysdale, was a singles champion of the this championship in let me see, 14 years ago. I have to say it, Virginia, was 74. We didn't play out uh, here either in this beautiful <laughs> arena, but yeah, I played this tournament <coughs> many times.
wide. Chris was in trouble a game ago, as you said, at Love 40. Again, she's in trouble at 15.40 on serve. Last time, she clawed her way out of trouble. But she had to come up with some pretty exotic, pa exotic passing shots. Martina just put so much pressure on all the time in a court this speed. Yeah, good depth from Chris. Chris doesn't usually play quite as many indoor tournaments. I'm thinking of uh, the old days. This tournament used to be held in the spring. Now the circuit pretty much finishes after next week and all the players have a, a rest, which is really appreciated over Christmas. Well, let's see. That's four. That's six break points that... Martina has had so far has not converted on one yet. We're back to Deuce at 2-3 in the first set. What a point. Both of these players practice against male players. Martina against Tim Gullickson and Chris is practicing with Juan Nunez. She seems to like him too, he's a bit taller. Got that break point finally. Converted by Martina Navratilova and she has a break to serve in the first set. Four games to two. And I was saying that uh, Chris doesn't usually play quite as many indoor tournaments, but she had an injured foot in the middle of the season and had to play another indoor tournament, which was actually last week, in order to qualify for the Virginia Slims bonus pool. Steffi Graf actually won the most Virginia Slims points throughout the year. She was way ahead, but she didn't play enough tournaments to qualify for the money. So that means that Martina goes up to the top position, Chris in the second position, and Sabatini in the third. Sabatini was a late entry in this tournament because there was a slight chance that she could have overtaken Chris. Let me tell you that that money is phenomenal. Martina will get what she was originally supposed to get 300,000 plus a percentage of what Steffi Graf uh, didn't take. Yeah. A little bit of help from the net 30 love. Martina and a breaker serve for two per set. Computer singles rankings going into this championship. Steffi Graf, number one player, Never to Lover, number two, Everett, number three, followed by Gabriella Sabatini. And then Pam Schreiber. And behind her, interestingly, the young lady that you saw from the Soviet Union playing last Sunday, Natalia Spareva. <laughs> at this stage last year going into the championships Martina I don't believe was playing as well as she is now and she lost to Sabatini then so oh. you wondered if she could get back in time and just short of being able to do it but I thought that uh, Chris would have won that point she hit such a magnificent passing shot which Martina just managed to flick up into such a good shot there. And it just shows that Chris is full of energy, even making the effort to run to that. Game point, never to lower for a 5-2 lead. First set. 
Martina holds on to serve. She has one break of serve. Final match of the Virginia Slims of Chicago. We'll be back. Probably know and you can see the final round of the Nabisco Championship of Golf from Pebble Beach, California on ESPN this afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Over $2 million in prize money. Oh, and that's a very good shot for Martina. That's a shot that I think she could use even more when she takes the ball early on the forehand, just nails it down the line, a bit like McEnroe. Whoa, just under pressure here. Two points from the first set for Never to Lova. Break points, and they also represent set points. The last time that Martina Navratilova lost a Chris Everett indoors was in 1980. Oh! I've thought Chris got a little bit psyched out on indoor courts, but actually I think it's just because she doesn't play that many. That was a, not a very good game from Chris. So Martina, as she has done so many times, has imposed herself early in the match against Chris in an indoor situation, and she wins the first set relatively easily, 6-2. Both players, of course, enjoying this match, but looking ahead to the Virginia Slims Championships that start tomorrow night, Madison Square Garden. The equivalent, of course, of the Nabisco Masters of men's tennis. You up shortly on ESPN from at Street Garden. Great return, but they have a different format, the men and the women. The women have 16 players and it's a knockout competition. They play the first round over the first three nights, plus some doubles, and then it goes down to the quarters. Well, Virginia, Chris has got to... Stop make the flow. Uh, yeah, she has to, doesn't she? She's got to turn things around somehow. She's got to do it quickly because otherwise this could be a route. 50 north. Well, it's always a danger. If you let Martina get her nose in front, she just sort of rolls over you. She starts moving quicker. It's all happened so fast. And that's one way that Chris might get a few points and start coming in herself a bit. One of the times they played each other this year was the Australian Open, of course. That won by Chris 6275 in the semi-final. Oh, that's a great shot. Chris played so well in that match and Martina was, I thought she was very, very nervous. She was mishitting balls, which is always a sign of nerves. Your, your eyes let you down when when you're very nervous and tense. Great return. Plus the fact that I think, you know, if you think about Martinez's year last year and this year, she played so few tournaments relative to her last year that, and she's a player who needs to just keep playing a lot so that she plays just by habit out there. This year she's played more and she's really fallen into form. Unbelievable. Terrific low volley, just well, not too many people in the world can hit it like she can. Billie Jean King certainly was one of them. But beautifully executed and gets her back to deuce. Break point saved, first game, second set. <laughs> break point opportunity for Chris. Yes, advantage ever to a break point. 
not much Chris could do against that. Next week in the garden, Chris is in Shriver's quarter and Graf Semi, her half, and Martina has took over her quarter and then Sabatino's Bereba. So on paper, it looks as if Martina has a pretty tough draw out there. People who have beaten her in the last year, but And Chris used a really good tactic here. She looped the ball right onto that base and sneaked in behind it, but gets an awfully tough volley. It's not hard to do anything very dramatic with that and consequently got past. Well, she was in trouble. Break points against her, but Martina Navratilova holds on. So she has the first set in her pocket and she leads one game to love. No serve break yet, as you see downtown Chicago in the background. We'll be back. 1,000 to the winner, 22-5 to the finalist. So either Chris looks at this point, certainly like Martina is in the driver's seat. Chris will take home 22-5. Semi-finalist, total purse of 250 for the Virginia Slims of Chicago. We're in the second set of this match. Chris Everett lost the first set rather easily, 6-2. She's down one game to love in the second. Unbelievable shot. And Chris hits this approach shot on the forehand. Strangely, with just a little bit of top spin. And there it comes, and she goes through and drives through it. Ah! Second game, second set, 30 love. And uh, neither of them is getting too many easy points out here. This one. I don't know where that error came from. Suddenly, an error, which you don't expect from Chris. that Chris has definitely improved as a second serve. She's hitting it hard and deep. But she certainly didn't get any consideration for that from Martina. Hit it back even harder. Martina's pressuring her pretty well today. Martina's making Chris go for the pass and the shots. She's hit a few. But then things have unraveled. 30 all. your second serve. Oh! Only just that. Thought that might be the time for Martina to take the second serve, chip and come into the net. She chose not to do it. Everett won the point, game point for Chris. One game all now, second set. Number two and number three player in the world battling it out for the $50,000 first prize of the Virginia Slims of Chicago. Number two lover won the first set 6-2. One game all on Cliff Drysdale along with Virginia Wade. So powerful that serve. Martina has won eight tournaments this year, but for the first time, not a single Grand Slam tournament. In actual fact, you know, we've reflected so much on this year being the changing of the guard, and here we have Chris and Martina playing each other in this final. Martina has only played Steffi Graf once this year, and that was in the final, of course, of Wimbledon. 
and for a set and a bit it looked as if she might win that tournament. You wouldn't have bet against her when she was a set and a break up, would you? No. But I think one of her problems, Martina's that is, is that she has been looking ahead at Steffi Groff and forgot to check what was behind her. I think that's right, Cliff, and that's why she's had a few indifferent results and some actually a couple of bad losses and the problem of course is in tennis that it's so much a confidence sport the more you win the more you continue to win so if you lose a few it shatters your confidence unbelievable serve an ace from Navratilova two games to one Navratilova on serve second set she won the first set 6-2 Virginia Slims of Chicago women's final we'll be back Course, they will continue to challenge the Bears, but the Dallas Cowboys, my goodness, what has happened to that great Texas team? Has not had a good start. So many close games that the Dallas Cowboys have lost this year, but it is the Vikings and the Cowboys tonight live at 8 o'clock Eastern Time right here on ESPN. Join us for that, please. Everett serving to never to lose. Two games to one, Martino on serve, second set, first set to Martina, six games to two, it's love 15. And Martina calling the shots here. And Chris having to cover so much court, but here she gets back and she earned that one. Martina had tried the little touch shot, which she does so well, and it hadn't quite worked. Wow. 30-15. I have a feeling that Chris enjoys playing a little more now than she used to. I think the same thing is true of Jimmy Connors. Finally, when you come to terms with yourself as a person, tennis kind of takes its place in perspective. More. Well, she doesn't have to prove anything anymore. She's won her 18 Grand Slam singles titles. She has been so gracious about shifting from the number one position, which she had for so long, into second against Martina, and now into third, really, after Steffi and Martina. That's too good. You know, you don't often have to talk about Chris being gracious in a losing position because she wins so much but I've always considered that she's been one of the most gracious winners I've ever seen she's won so much and she's always been very humble about it she's always let the loser have equal position with her game point now do Still on serve, two games all now in the second set. Martina, by the way, stopped short of a record eight singles titles at Wimbledon this year when she lost a match that you talked about to Steffi Graf, where she had the set and a break in the second set. <coughs> Helen Wills Moody is the only player to have ever won more than eight at Wimbledon. Well, they equaled eight. Right, she was trying to break the record, yeah. right? Excuse me. But what a record. She's won 17 Grand Slam singles, so it's still one less than Chris. But she's won so many doubles, Grand Slam titles. Well played. 
pretty to watch, isn't it? They're playing beautiful tennis. We talked about Sverreva's drop shot last week, and I was fascinated to see her use it and have it work against Martina. Chris, of course, before Sverreva, probably had the best women drop shot in the world. Or was there somebody No, I think No, well? uh, I think Chris always had just a beautiful drop shot. Sometimes you could even see it coming, and you still couldn't get there. She executed it so well. But I don't think she dares use it against Martina because the last thing she wants is Martina up in the front of the court. Chris has had her opportunities in the second set. And she has another one now, 15.30. If she could win this point, she'd have two chances to break. Very friendly, these two. They have been on outstanding terms for a, a generation of matches that they've played against each other. Both wonderful sports. Shot. Yeah, they they both ended up spending a lot of time in Aspen. In fact, Chris was staying in Martina's house at Aspen one year, and that was where she met Andy. And it's been now going back. Unbelievable. So, third ace. Good sir for Martina. I'm a tremendous admirer of her game, and I, when I criticise it, I, I I do so very reluctantly, but I think her second serve at this point has lost a little. Watch the second serve. In this game, they have been particularly short. She's just spinning them in, just trying to get them in. Watch. Interesting, because she obviously knew that they were short. She's not happy with the call. It was called long. Chris is very sportingly just standing back there waiting for the officials to make up their mind while, while Martina has her say. But the call will stand. Back to Deuce. And Christensen is in the chair. But it's funny, you know, she started off those first few games hardly missing a first serve. And then uh, her service percentage has definitely gone down. And it, that's got to be concentration, hasn't it? or that she doesn't need so many first serves at this stage in the match. She has hit so many gorgeous little drop volleys. It looks like such a difficult shot to play, but in actual fact, it's a reasonably high percentage shot to play if you get the ball out in front of you like that. It's an interesting comment that you make, Virginia, and I think that you're exactly right. The drop volley is not that low a percentage play. It's much more difficult to make a drop shot from the baseline than it is from the net, of course. Ah! Martina Navratilova stays out front in the second set. It's three games to two now, and she won the first set by six games to two against Chris Everett. They're playing for the final of the Virginia Slims of Chicago. Thank you to you, Jim. Interesting happenings there. We will certainly be joining you at 4.30 Eastern Time to watch the end of what promises to be a very exciting Nabisco Golf Championship. By the way, the last time I saw Jim Kelly was in Paris. He was eating Mexican food. I wonder what he's having down there in Chicago. <laughs> French food. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> in California. Pebble Beach. We're in Chicago. Chris Everett serving to Martina Navratilova. Second set on serve, 2-3. Well, 
15. And a serious looking Chris. well be serious because Martina is producing really all sorts of varieties to her winning game today. This is a critical point for Chris. Down, one set down, two, three in the second. It's love 30. about that. And now three break points. 140. Martina just in full flight today. She's really a picture to watch when she's moving so well. Break in the second set, talking about the Nabisco Masters golf. Join us for the Nabisco Masters tennis that will start November 30th each evening through the 5th of December. That's a Monday night final of that great championship. Fred Stolly will join us. And by the way, I was out in Kona with Fred at the Hyatt Waikoloa Hotel. Uh, last couple of days as you watch that great shot and what a spectacular place that is what a passing shot that is too from Chris well I must say that I think that both these girls are playing absolutely incredible tennis today they are definitely confident but on this surface Martinez game is going to beat Chris's I uh, can't help wondering, Cliff, if Martina is as confident going into the Virginia Slims Championships Madison Square Garden this next week, starting tomorrow. I can't help wondering whether she's not got a chance against Steffi. Only played her once this year. Oh. I tell you what I think it depends on is her serve effectiveness. Serving well. I, I know she can beat Steffi, but she's going to have to serve very well. Great return. Steffi has actually not played a tournament in the last two weeks. Won't have as many matches on the surface. Played the tournament in Brighton, which she won. She played a very, very fluid match in the final there. Looked the most confident I've seen her looking for a while. Oh, that's great. Game point for Martina. Doesn't seem to affect her adversely not playing that much, Steffi. Remember, she came back in San Antonio and won that tournament easily. It's right, because she seems to have a totally different procedure about planning her tournament. She just scatters them around and plays them. Martina needs, I think, to play a few and then get going. Chris needs to take breaks. Very good shot. That was game point. Fine passing shot from Chris, the second of this game. That one, not a winner, but good enough. But all the players feel at the end of the season that, you know, it's been a very long, tough year. Martina really struggled, said she would have thrown this year back if it had been a fish. <laughs> That's a great line. Didn't win any grand slams, but she seems to be back on form. Steffi, a was, a lot was taken out of her by winning the Olympics emotionally. Oh, yes. And another game point for Martina. Virginia, Steffi has played so little, as you mentioned. She's not even going to pick up a bonus pool, and all she had to play, that was about 12 tournaments plus the Grand Slam. She didn't even do that. Is that a good thing, do you think? I think it's probably not a bad thing because she practices so hard. She loves to play, but it's so easy to get stale at this game. And it's so easy to get tired. I mean, there's plenty of motivation, but heavens, you know, you've got to have your wits about you all the time, physically, mentally. 
will be whether the call which was initially made affected Martina and that is a decision that the man in the chair Mr. Christensen is going to have to make he makes the decision decides obviously that the call did not affect Martina's swing so he's called it the point for Chris Let's listen. he called it after you hit the ball it did not affect play it must have scared off that line because that was the reason Martina got jammed by that ball Martina asked him exactly that question and his reply was it did not affect play and actually I agree with it. Yeah, because it definitely, if it was in, it skid off the line and that's why she couldn't make the shot. Last week in Worcester, Massachusetts, she was objecting to the, these courts. As I said, they'd been resurfaced. She said they'd used the wrong paint on the line so the balls are just skidding off the lines. It was it was un, an unre, unreturnable hit by her. It was my my judgment that she was unaffected by that call. I think the call is a correct one. It's a, it's a shame from Martina's standpoint, but as you said, it did definitely come off the line. You could see it on the replay. Back to this. Good coverage from Martina. She knew exactly where Chris was going. I'm thinking of disputed line calls and important just as you watch it start. Just watch the way Martina manages to cover just perfect positioning there. She gets out and strong enough on that wrist to make the angle. They had a horrendous disputed call in their semi-final match at Wimbledon on match point. Oh, I remember it. It was so miserable that for two players who respect each other that much who've played each other so many times and it was such an important match and gets to match point and Chris had clawed away back from love 40 in that game to 30-40 and Martina was looking a little shaky Chris thought she'd made the call and hit the tape that's way out so never to love her has the advantage let's see she is requesting the flash photographers not to use them, obviously. But I remember their call so well, and I, I felt for Chris because I think it was a bad call against her. I was just going into the commentary box down for the BBC, and I could just see around the corner. I thought she had just, that ball had just slipped in. Well, Martina has held on, so Chris is in a lot of trouble. Five games to two and one set. We'll be back. Winning this championship here, Chris Evert and Martina are both going forward. Of course, in addition to that, the tournament champion will also get a beautiful diamond tennis bracelet. And I have a close-up look of it because Virginia's got one. Well, and you seeing it too now. And a week ago, Martina won one and apparently will win another one because she has a set up here and She's serving at five games to two. Well, no, she's not serving. Chris is serving, but she's up 5-2 in the second set. Very much in the driver's seat. I wonder what she will do with the second one, but your guess is as good as mine. But let's look ahead to next week, Virginia. Talked about the Virginia Slims Championship that is coming up. The comparison between these two players. You see the age is 32 and 34. As a matter of fact, Martina has just had a birthday, so... There, there's, uh, she's 33 years old now, 13, 16 years as a pro. Ever started younger than she did. 100 and, look at those titles that they have won, and Grand Slam titles. Their careers have been so similar. Everett has not won as much money as Never to Love, mainly because she started earlier in the biggest of the big money that is around now. Of course, uh, Martina won when she became the number one player in the world. But let's look ahead as we were talking about to this event next week which is as you said the draw of course there's some court repairs going on as well as you see so that's why there's going to be just a short delay uh -huh. but you have Steffi Graf up there in the same section as Chris so I guess if Chris had her druthers first of all she would have been in the bottom section to play against Navratilova if she had a choice wouldn't you think I would have thought so the, I don't think she anybody relishes playing Steffi but the way Martina's playing today I think Martina is very much in contention. Ow! 
Gutevich firming to stay in the match. She trails 2-5 under seven. Another interesting matchup in next week's action, Sverova and Sabatini. If they win their first round. That would be a second round. And Chris, just looking to me now as if she knows that the writing's on the wall that she has not got such a great record against Martina indoors and she might just gently slide out of this match. <laughs> Martina really indomitable today. She is, but I love the way you said that. I don't remember that line. <laughs> slide gently. Well, you know, it's what can you do? I mean, she's hitting the ball so well, Chris, but she's not really getting anywhere. Yep, she got it. You know, Chris has been hitting the ball firmly, early, constantly, in tremendous length, and uh, she's what, won two games in the first set and 2-5 down here in match points. Martina Navratilova, clearly the dominant player of the two today anyway. They have played four times this year going into this match. Won two of them and lost two of them. Starting off at the Australian and then playing again at the semi-final of Wimbledon. Here, Martina, clearly the stronger player indoors. Martina Navratilova, champion of the Virginia Slims of Chicago. We'll be back. We'd like to thank Virginia Slim and BMW for making this tournament possible. We'd also like to thank our participating sponsors for making this event the success that it has been this year. At this time, I'd like to introduce Nancy Bolger, Director of Public Relations for Virginia Slims. On behalf of Virginia Slims, I would like to congratulate the two finalists for a tremendous match today. As Larry said, there is no greater rivalry in all sports than the rivalry between these two great champions. This is the 17th year of the Virginia Slims of Chicago which set an all-time record of 45,000 fans this week. I'd especially like to thank Larry King, the tournament owner, Jan and Jerry Diamond, the promoters, and Janice Brown for a superbly run event all week. Thank you. And to, I'd like to introduce, to present the runner-up check, Mrs. Lee Winters, of BMW North America. Chris, can we have you come forward? is proud to be the sponsor of the Virginia Slims Tennis Tournament for the third consecutive year. This year's tournament has been very exciting because of the tremendous field 
and the caliber of our two finalists. On behalf of BMW of North America and the 11 Chicago area BMW dealers, I am pleased to present this check in the amount of $22,500 for the ultimate tennis tournament in Chicago sponsored by the Ultimate Driving Machine. Thank you. I think you felt a little sorry for me out there, <laughs> the way you're clapping. Um, I just like to say congratulations to Martina. Um, I definitely could have played better, but I, even at my best, I don't think I could have beaten her today. She, on this court especially, she has such a great serve, and you know she puts me on the defensive the whole time. So she's really in top form, and um, you know I think. She has a really great chance next week, so I have to congratulate her on beating me. Also, um, I'd like to thank BMW for being the presenting sponsor, Virginia Slims for being the overall sponsor, um, Jerry and Jan Diamond for once again doing a great job, uh, Larry King, Janice Brown for being the tournament director, and uh, Juan, my coach, and my husband for supporting me. Thank you guys. And if I would have known I would have gotten the support this week, I would have been back every year. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> um, I really appreciate it, and if I'm Hopefully I'll be playing next year, and if, if I am playing next year, I'd love to come back. Thank you very much. And Martina, this is your ninth Virginia Slims of Chicago title. <laughs> to present the winner's check, Mr. Ed Van Dyke, the region director of Philip Morris USA. First, before I present this check to our fabulous champion, I'd like to say, Chris, in Chicago, we have some of the world's greatest tennis fans. <laughs> so we welcome you back to the Windy City. Now let me present to Martina, the magnificent, this $50,000 championship check. Okay. You give it to me, then you take it away. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so I think Chris and I are like wine, you know, we get better with age. And the older we get, the more you guys appreciate us. So I think we'll stick around another 10 years or so. <laughs> no, we really both do appreciate being appreciated. And also, uh, uh, thank you for coming and uh, giving up the bears. So that's, that's something. I know <laughs> what a football city this is. Anyhow, I think uh, women's tennis has been very... Uh, um, uh, entertaining over the years and, and I'm very proud that I'm part of it especially with with Chris being uh, such incredible rivals but most of all such incredible friends uh.
I know she can play a lot better, and I'm sure that she won one of these days against me again, so I'm not holding my breath because we'll be playing each other again. But anyway, I'd like to thank uh, BMW for uh, the ultimate driving experience. I somehow did not get the ultimate speeding ticket this week, driving your car. <laughs> Got away with it. Uh, but uh, also, uh, <laughs> like to, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Virginia Slims for uh, supporting women's tennis for now about 17 years. And uh, of course, the promoter, uh, Jan and Jerry Diamond, and Larry King, the owner of the tournament. Sounds like you own us, too, you know? <laughs> And Janice Brown, they really do put, in, put on a good event. That's why the, the players always come back. And uh, like Chris, if I'm playing, which I'm planning on playing, uh, I'll be definitely back next year. And I also would like to thank the uh, linesmen, umpires, lineswomen. And uh, the ball kids, they did a great job this week. And uh, my coach, Tim, Craig, Judy, and Svatka, and, and the Heschel clan for uh, taking such good care of me this week. Thank you all, and see you next year. Thanks. So the winner of this championship, you have just heard from her, Martina Navratilova over Chris Evitt, 6262. Two great champions in a final that, well, could have been a little better in terms of being so one-sided.